Good afternoon from Baltimore. This is Alistair Williamson. So what we're taking a look at is the Boston free speech rally. We're understanding that there's these rallies, uh, just like we saw in Charlottesville uh, last week, is that we're seeing these social upheavals starting to increase more and more. It seems that time today is getting faster as we probe into the second half of 2017. You know, we're understanding that there's specific organizations uh, that are at these uh, at these events, and, and some of them are run by the Soros Foundation. But my point being here, we have to understand what is happening and why today is not a major concern. It's a precursor to much larger events but people should not get worked up. And the reason for that, I'm going to break it down in an economic perspective. We first have to understand the bottom 90% of Americans. The bottom 90% of Americans have low wage, low skill uh, jobs that have high turnover rates. The bottom 90% of Americans have debt up to their eyeballs. Millennials, for instance, are the majority probably who are out in these uh, rallies and protests and riots, whatever you want to call them by definition, uh, you're seeing millennials out there that have a balance sheet of auto debt, student debt, consumer credit card debt, have a lot of debt, and we're into an interest rate cycle that is going to the upside. So what does that mean? It means that it's going to be more expensive to service that debt. Now, we have to understand, and the reason that Amer it's not it's not a big concern to us right now is because a lot of these events are isolated on the weekends. If you understand the consumer, the consumer has to work. The bottom 90% of Americans have to work uh, and, and a lot of them are living paycheck to paycheck. You know, there's about 60% of Americans that don't even have $500 uh, in, their, in their savings. You know, the savings rate in the United States is 7 to 8%. So this is all by design. Why is it all by design? Because you can't have the bottom 90% out in the city streets on the weekdays. Think about it. How many of these events, besides the anomaly we saw in Ferguson and the anomaly we saw in Baltimore, think about most of these events. They're Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Everybody goes back to work. Until and this is our and this is what we're you know we're saying until we see protests, riots, rallies in the middle of the week, we will then understand that there is a serious issue because those who are attending are missing out on work. It's it's called a job. It's not a career. The bottom ninety percent of Americans have jobs from paycheck to paycheck. They don't have careers. We understand that. Uh, the industry and the productivity in America is non-existent today. We have subpar economic growth, and our government um, and even non-financial companies have so much debt that in this uh, interest rate cycle, uh, it's going to take away from investment. It's going to take away from being productive because these entities will have to service their debt. So we have an issue. It's structural. It's too much debt. The consumer the non-financial companies, our government, high debt to GDP ratio. We learned nothing from Japan. But anyways, you know, back to back to this, it's that if you start seeing the bottom 90% of Americans protest or rally or riot during the weekdays, then you got to be concerned because they're missing out on their job, which their job in return for whatever task or service they're doing, they get paid in dollars or maybe cryptocurrencies today, but get paid in dollars. Where do those dollars go? Those dollars go into the bank and then they get withdrawn to service their debt, the consumer debt, the auto debt, the student loan debt, whatever debt it happens to be. When we see these consumers in the middle of the street on a weekday, we then know that the bottom 90% of Americans are missing out on the job, missing out on the debt servicing payment, and there is some very, very structural issues, serious structural issues that I would be very concerned. But as of today, we have to wait until we see it in the streets. Then we know that a bigger crisis is looming. Right now, this is a precursor. It's all these these movements, these rallies, these protests, these riots, whatever you want to call it, you know, some people throw out the word domestic terrorism, whatever, whatever by definition you want to call it, we don't see it in the weekdays as of yet. Until then, this is just a precursor to a much larger event, and I would prepare. 
I would prepare for social upheavals. I would prepare that the fourth turning in America is deepening and it's deepening quicker than I think many of us have thought. And a lot of that is because of media. Media is pushing and dividing our country in ways that we would never have thought it would be in 2017. What happened to this peace and harmony and everything is great? It's not. And many are waking up to this reality that we do have very, very big structural issues in America and that there are organizations out there who are driving and pushing and maneuvering America into turmoil. We need to understand that we are in economic turmoil. We're in uh, social, or we're in ge uh, geopolitical turmoil uh, in North Korea and other various hot spots around the world, or possible hot spots. Um, and then we're in this uh, this political and social uh, um, turmoil. So we have a lot of turmoil that is now just coming out from the surface. And a lot of Americans don't know how to deal with it. They don't know how to deal with truth. Or some of this is not even truth. It's just, it's propaganda. Remember, since the Smith-Mund Act in 2013 being repealed, whatever you see on the news, whatever you see in the mainstream, it's okay for them to lie. It's called propaganda. Look it up. It's reality. It sucks. It sucks where we're at. But it's a great time to be alive if you understand the turnings and what's happening today.